Hi, I'm Lily. Today, I'm going to read your story. Fairy tale. Reading grade to level 3A. Fairy tale. Okay, let's read it. Fairy tale. Dressed to impress, Miss Fuzzy wanted her classmate, her class, to make up their own fairy tale. She asked everyone to come to school dressed as a fairy tale character. When Miss Fazio joined in, even Miss Fazio joined in, she wore a pretty pink dress and a blonde wig with curly pigtails that bounced when she talked. Who are you, Miss? asked Leon. Miss Fazio didn't answer. She just smiled. Does anyone have a pencil for me so that I can mark the roll? Mouse climbed clumsily out of his chair and handed her a pencil. She was wearing a big hairy old suit. Here you are, Miss Miss Fazio glazed at the pencil. Too short, she said, Ruby revealed a pencil from under the red cape she was wearing. Too flat too fat, said Miss Fazio, shooting the pencil away. Miss Ming handed Miss Fazio a pencil that she had stick, sticky taped to a wand. Too big, said Miss Fazio. Rahib handed Miss Fazio a pencil with his webbed fingers. Ah, just right. She, she cooed. Miss, I know, I know, you're a goldilocks. You're goldilocks, cried Nelson. Yeah, goldilocks. And... Gurdjieff nodded, which made her pigtails spell widely. And you like the brave knight? You look like the brave knight. Nelson proudly pulled the Kerber sword from his belt and bowed low to Goldilocks. Brooke and Beatrice giggled. Don't, uh, do be quiet. Do be quiet. Fair maidens, said Goldilocks. Hark, I hear knocking at the cottage, I mean, classroom door. After the first knock, Gordrox, Gordrox, not loud enough. After the second knock, she said there are still that, still not enough, not loud enough. After the third knock, she said, ah, just right, said, open the door. Gordrox, sure. It's fuzzy, said the rain knight. Miss Mingo, the librarian, stood in the doorway. She did not look happy. Goldilocks skipped out of the class to talk to Miss Mingo. Chapter 2 Pleased to meet you. With Goldilocks out of the room, the students began to introduce themselves to each other. And little Bo Pip announced Holly, and I have lost my ship. She pretended to cry. I had nothing to do with it, said no. I had nothing to do with it, said Moss inside his old suit. I think we have mappy fools, said Ruby, and little Red Riding Hood. And I'm Rapunzel, said Heeny. I have hair so long that I use it for skipping. She jumped over her long plaits. That's what I call handy air, remarked the brave knight. Let me put a spell on your hair and make it even better, cackled Ming beneath her witch's hat. Be careful, Rapunzel, said Rahib, pulling a crown off his head. I was a handsome prince before the wicked witch cast a spell and on me, and I'm a, I'm a frog now. Now I'm a frog. You're the frog prince, actually, said the wicked witch with a cackle. It was one of my better spells. Gurdirox plucked her head back into the classroom. Class, I am new to the library for a moment. Yeah, so, Bruno, sorry, uh, no. I mean, large dragon, could you go to the art storeroom and get out some paints and paper for everyone? Magic dragon, corrected Bruno. I am the magic dragon, not a large dragon. What kind of magic do you do? asked the fair maidens. Bruno shrugged. Um, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, I'm not sure. Just, just standard scary green dragon magic, I guess. 
He replied and shuffled to the storeroom at the back of the classroom. Well, said Goldilocks, I would like the rest of you to work some magic and start painting your ideas for the class fairy tale. Couldn't we do do it? Could couldn't we just do a story about a brave knight as the brave knight? They are very popular. Goldilocks rolled her eyes. I heard that all before Mr. Knight, she sighed, leaving the room. Goldilocks sure is fussy, huffed the brave knight. Chapter 3 Fantasy Fantasy Powers The classroom became noisier after Goldilocks laughed. The brave knights argued with the wicked wicked witch over who the fairy tale should be about. Little Red Riding Hood remind, reminded the wolf how they met in a story. Are you sure it was me? said the wolf. I come from a big family. I learned from a large family. You know, maybe it was my cousin. The fair maiden giggled at the frog princess joke. Why are frogs so happy? They eat whatever bugs them. Uh, what's black, white, and green? A frog sitting on a newspaper. How would a frog feel when he breaks his leg? Oh, no, pee. What is a frog's favorite music? Hip hop. Hip hop. Oh, the well. And everyone's are noisy. Liam sat quietly at the edge of the classroom with a large total shell stepped to his back. Goldilocks never even noticed me, so suddenly, suddenly there were crashes and bangs in the art, art storeroom. Everyone turned to hear a muffled cry from the room. Help! Somebody help! I'm stuck! cried the magic dragon. I'll save you! cried the brave knight. He charged to the storeroom door, but it was locked. The magic dragon was trapped inside. Can I just... began the tortoise, but... He stopped. No one was listening to him. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow the door down, said Wolf. He huffled, he, he huffed and he puffed until he didn't have any huff or puff left. More crashes came from inside the storeroom. Ah, cried the magic dragon. That one hurt. Can I just, said Tortoise, trying again. Still, no one was listening. Stand back and let me pull us. Put a spell on the door, commanded the wicked witch. She attacked the keel in her wand, but it broke. I used my best ruler to make that wand, whimpered the witch. Can I suggest that we said the tortoise one more time? But everyone was talking. Little Boo Pip wanted the brave knight to use her crop on the door. Rapunzel agreed with the oof that he could tie her hair into a rope. As long as it didn't hurt, then they started arguing about what to do with the rope. The fairy maidens were still laughing at the frog princess bad jokes. What does a frog say when he says something great? Totally awesome! As the noise continued, Tortoise quickly climbed through the small high window of the cleaner storeroom next to the art storeroom. His shell just fit. Crash! Carpet! There, there were more moves from the magic dragon, but then there was silence followed by giggles. All of a sudden, the storeroom door clicked. It swung open and out stepped the magic dragon covered in paint. You are a magic dragon, squealed the fairy maidens. You change color, the magic dragon blushed. Slipping out from behind the magic dragon was Tortoise. Hey, asked the now, how did you get in there? Through the window, smiled Tortoise, pointing above everyone's heads. And that, I used a key to open the door. Ooh, clever, said the fairy maidens together. Chapter 4 Sitting Quietly When Goldilocks returned, everyone tried to tell her the, the tale of the trapped dragon. Not so fast, said Goldilocks. One at a time, I speak slowly. Goldilocks noticed that Tortoise was already sitting quietly. Leon, sir, sorry, I mean Tortoise. Would you kindly tell me the tale of the trapped dragon? Smalled Goldilocks. 
tortoise told the story not too quickly or slowly or quietly or loudly, but just right. Goldilocks laughed and laughed. She gasped and giggled, giggled. She laughed so hard that she went red in the face and snorted. Goldilocks loved the tail of the trout dragon. She was impressed, and everyone knows how fussy Goldilocks can be. Today, I read a story about fairy tale. I love fairy tales, and and Miss Fuzzy is Goldilocks, and I'll show you the picture. It's so funny. Miss Fuzzy is Goldilocks, and Miles is a wolf, and so many wicked witch. Um, Little Red Riding Hood and Rapunzel and so many people. Okay, today I write your story, fairy tale. Okay, bye!